The symposium is general enough to be interesting for different levels of academia, industry, government, uh, even students for that matter. But what's interesting for me is seeing it is I deal with typical day-to-day -day issues of vehicle technology and vehicle testing, but sometimes we lose sight of other applications that are coming in or battery technology or new motor technology, how different OEMs are addressing um, the same set of uh, same set of criteria, but they do it again in a different way, and we kind of lose sight of that unless we regroup and kind of re re come together, and someone will present something in a completely unique way that you hadn't really considered before. So having that sort of different set of eyes and kind of a different uh, approach has been really useful. With regards to diversity of, of either architecture or particular powertrain technologies, I don't think we're there yet in terms of coming up with any particular solution. We, we think we start to come to a particular crossroads where we see some familiarity and then a year later goes by and we see some new novel concept that completely opens it back up again. For example, we saw a case today where we're talking about different engine technologies and then we follow that up with a completely radically different transmission technologies. And those are things that you know we can't predict for in two or three years from now what it will look like. There's also a big variety in terms of what uh, intellectual property each manufacturer may have and that may lead them one direction or another with res with regards to architecture so if someone develops a particular intellectual property that becomes very specific to their system it may have not been considered before but suddenly becomes a viable option well for any hybrid vehicle or electrified vehicle um, energy storage is really the key to what we can do so to the extent that future battery technologies or even current battery technologies are either um, making advances in power density or energy density or really importantly cost, um, those I think are still going to be the fundamental underliers of, what, uh, of how the vehicle architecture adapts in future and how much we can deliver to a customer for EV range or for vehicle performance from acceleration for example, is still underlying the fundamentals. I don't think we're getting away from that. Especially here in California, we have an opportunity to show a little bit something different than what you'd see in Michigan or some other places because it's California what tends to drive the vehicle market, especially that electrification. So for coming out here, we, we tend to see things a little bit differently. First of all, it's just the context is different and once we bring people out here to California, even through uh, on Nissan side that I work on or through SAE side, suddenly the context changes. You can understand how the customer uses the vehicle in the environment. Uh, the, just the geography around California is so diverse and so beautiful that you can kind of understand some of the motivations that customers have. So when we start to talk about different customers and how they adopt, it's not so much of a stretch as you might think of a uh, customer adopting a particular technology. So out here, um, where the policy is made, where there's lots of different variety in the types of, um, of uh, customer base, we see a lot of different types of variety in what customers adopt from different range of hybrids from plug-in range, pure electric vehicles to plug-in hybrid vehicles. We kind of run the gamut here in California, so it tends to be a little bit of like a test case for what we may see in the future for other locations.